Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another exciting episode of You've Already Peaked Gaming Podcast, featuring your sultry host, Lokar the Man Beast. Give us a growl. Grr. Also featuring me, the Lobster Dust. Give us a growl. I don't know what that was. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. Like a, It just sounded like... Chewbacca, yeah, just gargling jizz. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? man? How are things, dude? How's... It's great. Yeah, I'm not ready for heat. No, I, I think that's what I'm coming to right now. I, I'm like out and about, and like I'm catching rays of sun or like i'm parking my car and then like all of a sudden i get back in my car i'm like oh no it's like fucking hot you know the ac yeah. i've got to pump the ac windows down is not really doing the effect it should have been doing oh just it's too fucking early it's too early yeah it's too early i know we bitch about this every year but it is i am not i'm not ready for it yeah yeah i feel you yeah so i wear I just call it a condom. Yeah. But it's a, uh, it's basically like a rain jacket, like a really light rain jacket. And no matter the temperature, I wear that. But when it starts getting hot, because it's like non permeable, it doesn't breathe, it turns into basically a sauna suit. That's the best way to lose weight, man. You start duct taping your arms at, in the trailer. Oh, I all, it's already like that. I wear it because. You never know, especially someone of my stature. Often, there is a, a small nurse or something that's like, "Can you help me with this patient?" Oh, and so oh. I have to like go help pick them up, and like more times than I can count, I go and I help somebody, and then I smell like them the rest of the day. Yeah, I see the residue that they leave on yeah. my scrubs. Yeah, so I just wear that because it's like fucking plastic. I literally just take bleach wipes <laughs> and I just wipe <laughs> myself down, and I'm all good. <laughs> You should you should get it in cloth and then it's like a tie dye print <laughs> and like at the end of the year you could just hold the shirt up and just be like and then you can have the patient sign their get skid like marks the thing that you spray for like petri dishes to let the fucking <laughs> yeah, <stuff> culture, cultivate yeah. <laughs> just put it yeah that, that's all we'll do and we'll put it in like a like a like a bag kind of damp and we'll I love that pattern it. what is that I think it's syphilis I can't <laughs> yeah. be sure we'll let it grow for a year and then pop it out this one's cliff <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah I'm happy yeah. for the weather I'm happy to see like it's pretty it is it's nice to be outside I'm fucking over it <laughs> yeah, I'm done I'm ready for winter again I can you imagine fucking like San Diego like Pacific Northwest, when it's like it's bright, but like the highest it is is like seventy two. Did you see Dubai? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they got three hundred and sixty five days worth of rain in twenty four hours or some shit like that. That's so, what you get, man. They're fucking with nature. They are. They're over there doing. They've been cloud seeding for yeah, fucking how many years? For years? It's catching up. And the scientists are out like, no, cloud seeding was not the problem that caused this. You don't sure. think so? The you most don't think dumping moisture into it over that much like eventually it was gonna catch up right I watched, I watched this um this thing where it was like one of the fucking dubai scientists or whoever meteorologist team that had been in charge of this whole thing and was explaining what they did and it was like every time that we see a cloud we send the plane up and then we we spray all the salt and everything into the into the clouds to have it fucking start to form this whole thing and then hopefully we would get more water and rain and um like I get the concept, but like for years, you know, people have been like chemtrails, 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 you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, Dubai is like, I'm watching the videos. People are like, some people are like, oh, it's not that bad. And then it's like, you see the rest, like you see buildings just like, because they weren't designed 
to withstand yeah. water. So you're just nope. seeing buildings like collapse from the inside out from all this fucking water. There's like roadways. There's <laughs> I just saw this video of this guy just sitting in his car. <laughs> it's like a Mercedes or something, and it's just filled. And he's like, too much water, too much water. <laughs> and then someone had a video. They were like, what they're not showing you is also the other side. Like, okay, here's all the city and shit going on. But they're like, this is the desert. And there's just like camels getting fucking like blasted out by the water and stuff like that. And it's just like, and it's just far, like you're thinking a desert and there's just waves of water pushing out through the desert. Yeah. And it's like, that's fucking, not only is that scary, but how, think about, think about your infrastructure. Everything, all your foundations are all built on sand. Right now, like Dubai looks good. Sand's very permeable. It is. And well, not only just that, but sand hardens and shifts when it's wet too. So now you also have displacement because of sand. All you need to have now is that sand dry back up. Oh, fuck. And then every calls and fucking holy shit. It's going to be wild. <laughs> it's going to be wild. And that's like, <laughs> this is like the part of like my job when we put like foundation down. It's like you have to have like serious solid basing before like you pour your concrete. So it's just, it's a, it's a wild scenario to think about. And like, so I was going back and I was watching videos from like the nineties for, from us, from when we were kids and like, it had like Dubai and stuff like that. And Dubai was literally just a fucking desert like they had the cities and stuff like that back saw, then it's before they started like building their own yeah, peninsulas and yeah. shit like and then like adding water and keeping things going within yeah. it like i saw a video like they were doing a side-by-side -side comparison between like the 90s and like what it is now and i was like whoa man like i just like it's just so far outside of our places that i would be that i just that's that know. oil money baby that's okay, because Dubai looks dope, dude. Like, I mean, up until right now, I mean, I, it, it looks sick. Like fucking a month ago. Yeah. Although I was, I was really excited to see they were like, um, I don't know if it was like Saudi princes or what. You know, it's all just oil money anyway. But uh, this guy was talking. He's like, I never had one of these before. I never, I never even knew what I was gonna do with one of these. He's like, but we always had one because why not? It's something to buy. And then the next scene is him just out on a jet ski, just. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, oh, that's fucking <laughs> sick. Oh, uh, it's uh, fucking wild, man. Yeah. Good times. Good time. end of times. I, you know, I think I think in the Quran, Quran. Mm -hmm. Quran, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they said that's the signif like that's the marking of the end of times when the deserts run rich with water again and things are green. Like Egypt is blooming. They're having all sorts of like yeah. stuff like that. Like this might be the end of times. I mean, think about like I'm okay. It, come on. <laughs> Locations like that though, like that have been mostly desert for long periods of time that then like regrow back into these tropical areas, like makes me also wonder at what point does like all of our lush forests and tropical areas that we have now become those deserts? <laughs> we just shift on the planet or where we had it to go. Yeah. They said global warming was the fucking problem. <sighs> Man bear pig. I think it needs to be more warm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fuck what we just opened this podcast with. Oh, I'm so sick of the heat. Let's make it warmer. <laughs> well, think about it. We'll acclimate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Like, I was thinking about, like, people that live closer to, like, like Palm Springs, Huntington Beach. Well, Huntington Beach is not so much, but, like, Palm Springs area, shit like that. It's, like, it's you, hot. It's just hot. It's hot all the time. Like, your houses are made with tile. There's not a single carpet in anybody's house because there's just no way to disperse heat. You know what I mean? And it's just like, and you walk outside and like, you can't, you can't own anything plastic outside because it just melts. You can't own anything metal outside because it just becomes surface. They of the get sun. on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. California sucks. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, fuck this place. I wouldn't be anywhere else though. I would. Yeah. But for weird to read. Okay. I don't think I would give a shit where I lived as long as I had fast internet. Yeah. I think that's all it comes down to. Like I could, I could live anywhere as long as I had good internet. 
Well, mm, yeah, I probably wouldn't still like pick like Tornado Alley. <laughs> The yeah, Bible or like belt, the Fallujah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got fast internet. Yeah. Hold on, look, boy. Shut up. <laughs> Shoot a fucking pot. <laughs> the inside of your walls are just steel with like lead lighting. <laughs> when I got that fast <laughs> internet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just airstrikes. Just hammering back the fucking tips of the missiles back to the wall. <laughs> Patching it up. Oh, man. Ah. Oh. So what's new in the world of gaming? Tarkov. Tarkov, Tarkov, Tarkov. Let's talk about it. I think I'm Tarkov'd out. Eh, you're weak. I'm not you're weak. I'm we're bored. just we're just getting to the real boring missions. It's really it's fucking a, it's boring, a long, dude. You're ahead of me and and like I'm just oh. starting to get I'm like god damn it. The real tedious fucked up ones that people don't want to do, that's what keeps you from the end of the game. Oh, I I can see that. That's where you're I at can and see that's that. where I'm coming in at. I can, it sucks. I've got like missions where it's like kill 15 scavs in uh uh the the bungalow area and stuff like that. And it's like I spend yeah, like you gotta find that fucking bungalow, bro. I'm just like well, sitting. Okay. The Sains is really kind of fucking this, the whole like kills this in different yes, areas. Yes. Because the, pulling them way away from like their natural spot. Well, I, I wasted an entire raid today to get nine scav kills, nine out of 12. And I just sat in one area and waited for scavs to show up. Because even though there are waypoints and they move to, because of the game respawn spots, they it does seem like the bots try to generate themselves towards a like a general poi so instead of it yeah. being like the scavs are only in one location they do spread out but they do seem like at a certain point they come back and then they just they do this it seems like which is which is fine um i found a trick so i downloaded a mod that basically allowed me to like change timing and stuff for hideout stuff and things and i was like cool i i'm at that point where i'm just done i'm done waiting because I started building my scav case and it came up with a timer. It was like 78 hours or something like that. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like I farmed the mats, right? Like I didn't, well, I bought, I bought, I think like, I think I bought the gold rings, but everything else I farmed out and I bought the, an, an extra scav case or whatever, but I farmed all the fucking mats. And then it was like 78 hours. And I was like, absolutely not. So I downloaded this this mod that allows you to change the the hideouts timers. It allows you to just kind of like you can pick and choose what you want and like it sets it up. And I'm like, this is sick, perfect, awesome. Didn't realize once you start a craft, you can't <laughs> cancel it. So it's already done. So you're still waiting. No, even better, found the next solution. Because I was like, if I don't find the solution, I'm not playing anymore. I'm done. I'm not. I just don't want to wait three and a half days. to. But then I got a mod for the mod. Kind of. No, actually, better yet. Because it's offline and single player, just advance your date on your computer. And then it, you just advance it like a day or whatever. Like if you have a timer that's on 24 hours, advance it a day. If it's a day that's three days, advance it three days. Okay, my dumbass didn't also realize this is something you have to think about. If you have open optional quests, they're going to go away. Um, do not keep your generator running. I had six, <laughs> six full gas tanks in there, advanced it six days, came back, all the gas is gone. I was like, whoops. <laughs> like, there's just no other way around that. I was like, whoops, you know? Um <laughs> So, I mean, mistakes made, but easy solution if you want to just progress your hideout without sitting and waiting the entire time. So it was easy. It was like, you know, just you start a craft, get off, advance your date, go back in, it's ready to roll. And I was like, okay, I, I can do that. That's that's fine. I mean, there's certain ones that I'm like, I'm not going to, you know, I turn I with that mod, I kind of made it so I get more Bitcoin, but not super quick because um, I got my Bitcoin farm up and running. So I have it still like every 24 hours, I think I make like five Bitcoin or something like that versus just one. And it feels like it allows a progression. It means I don't have to cheat that system where I'm like buying shit off the flea and reselling shit back to the flea. That way I can just like go back into playing the game and not doing the meticulous like cheesiness of the flea. But 
I, I just, I cannot be fucked with those missions right now. I can't. Yeah. And I get it. I understand. Okay, this is what I understand. I get why people at a certain point just go, fuck it, I'm going to PvP. Yeah. Because it's just so boring. Well, if you're at the point that you're getting those missions, you're probably at least close to all max traders. Like, yeah, it's Jaeger, kind of like Jaeger's you're, max. Fi you're finishing the game for your own yeah. pleasure. Everything else that you can get out of the game is kind of gotten. Except for like Lighthouse, Kappa. There's not really much that's really holding you back. Other yeah, than I, well, that was that's my point. That's why I want. I wanted to get to Kappa because I've never seen it. Right, wanted to complete a bunch of that stuff. I wanted to get Max Traders. I wanted to see Lighthouse. Um, so like that's the that's the push I'm trying to go for. But I'm also at a point now where I'm like I just don't care. So I also have that part of that mod that allows you to change the hideout stuff. Also, it's like a full overhaul for different tweaks. So I may or may not have, and leaning more towards may, bump the experience gain a little bit because I was like, let's let's move this along. Let's move this along. I just want to want to see, want to get there. Um, not drastically. I just went up 1.5 times, you know, versus just the standard one time that we get. And it's actually made things a little bit easier for like leveling strength and endurance and things like that. And I was like, that's okay. I'm totally fine with that. So I'm sick of I'm sick of running in with like come in underweight loot one item and then i'm fat and i'm like Ugh, you know but i'm burnt not burnt i just i think i need a breather i've been going way too hard into tarkov i need to play something else yeah i don't know i'm still fucking balls deep in it and, and it's not even it's like i get on it's, it's that vicious cycle i'm not even having fun <laughs> I'm, I'm like I am, but like I'm getting on, and you're just like, "Fuck it, I gotta do what?" And then you just spend like two, three hours just grinding one fucking pathetic quest that you hate, and then you finish it, and then they give you three more pathetic <laughs> quests that you hate. And you're just like, "Fuck!" I, I know eventually it gets better, so I, I'm, I'm trying. That's what I'm, I, I'm. I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that some of the missions a little bit later become way more like interesting missions. But I have missions where it's like you need, um. What is it? 313's marquee for the cultist mission. I don't have that key, and it's like 4 million on flea. And I'm like... And then there's like trade-in for it, but I need like other like keys before I can get the trade. And just... They're just becoming so tedious. Or there's missions where it's like, you need to go to four different maps to place one marker. And it's like, God damn it. Like... And I don't have enough missions that are like keeping me in those those zones for those specific missions. So I'm like, okay, well maybe I'll just start stacking some of the lighthouse ones, but then I'm like, okay, well they're all like just meticulously boring shit or like, okay, I'll level up my trader. I'll get the rep ready to go for when I hit that level, I'm ready to just roll into the next tier. And then those are even more meticulous and boring. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do something. So I've just been, I went back to just farming bosses for a while. Cause I've been looking for the black key or any, any key card other than access keys. They don't exist in my game. They don't exist. Lead X's. I've run labs so many times. You can have 10 GPUs. I have eight GPUs in my Bitcoin farmer. I have still yet to see a Linux. I've got seven GPUs in my Bitcoin farm. I think I've not found a Linux twice going to labs. And every time I'm about to be like, like I'll literally like be like, well, I better text Trevor. Just let him like, like you should get on. My luck's run out. <laughs> yeah. and then like, I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> just I don't know what it is. I don't know. I mean, it's just the way it is. I still have, I still haven't found cowboy hats. <laughs> like I'm, yeah, no, I've got missions that are like so far. Like when I was Half like, mask, cowboy mats, you shankas. Yeah. Yep. I still have a whole cooler filled, filled. I've got like three spaces left of like sausages. They're all, all with the found in raid tag. Boom, boom, boom. I wish there was like a, a Jaeger, like, NPC like in the game that you can just go and just bring all the sausages and, and just eat them directly in front of them. <laughs> What's it? Glizzy. Really I have it for the <laughs> ultimate glizzy mode. <laughs> Christ almighty. Fucking. Mm. 
So because of Tarkov, because yeah, of let's talk about it being slightly Get into it. slightly burnt, but not like burnt in a bad way, but just burnt in a situation where I'm like the 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 thing about Tarkov that I'm now starting to realize at this point in the end game that I think appeals to a lot of people and I think would actually appeal to me if we were playing on live is I wanted to start playing with friends. I want I would like to play an extraction game with friends or something like this with game. So there's a few games coming out that I'm like really ready for. Unfortunately, anytime you find a game that is always day on one. What? Which one? Day one. Of what? Gray zone. I know. I know. It was first play test. I know. I watched. And if you want, if you want Tarkov with friends, but not Tarkov, that's kind of where it's at. Gray zone does look pretty good. And the fact that they've like, they're like, we've like tripled the amount of NPCs that are on the maps. So it doesn't ever feel like players are going to need to fight one another for stuff. It's more. And like the size of the map is like a persistent open world where it's just like, you're not going to have to worry about those ideas of needing to farm other players for stuff unless you just want to be a real piece of shit. Um, it seems really enticing. The always online portion of the game is where things start to get questionable. That's where, like we talked about last time, where I think that's where the cheats are going to start coming in, especially when there's going to be gear and stuff to trade and real money transactions and all these things. I'm just worried about it. You know, it looks phenomenal, though. Looked a little sluggish, but I think that's just like day one playtest server stuff. First day impressions, crazy and warfare. And I got to say, I'm impressed. Pros, graphic and frame rate was much better than expected. Prox chat interacting with others was clear and very useful. Missions seem intriguing and plentiful. Loved having the map to see faction and squad locations. Still felt very hardcore with no UI on the screen, like pings, hit markers, names, etc. Appreciate its perpetual world with no time limits nor loading times. The rarity of PvP we ran into made it extremely exciting when it did happen. Solid reconnect fi- feature to not lose everything. Huge. Huge was difficult, but understandable. Same with attachments and initial gear. Map felt huge and very detailed with plenty of cover and so much freedom. Cons. Initial problems crashing on game. Open. Dev showed me how to fix it with computer settings. Inconsistency killing AI, sometimes they just wouldn't die. Stutters and audio skipping in some locations. Squad, comms, voice got staticky and mute didn't work. Server disconnects, inconsistency with reconnecting to the same servers with friends. AI seemed to spawn out of nowhere and for the most part didn't seem hard until you randomly get one tapped. Cons seem pretty lightweight for being a... Cons seem like Tarkov after (laughs) 10 years. You're like, so day one, you're having Tarkov problems? All right. (laughs) But Like, not only day one of Tarkov problems, but day one of playtest, right? That was Stone Mountain. Yeah. take on it. Stone Mountain is an interesting cat. I like his... Stone Mountain is a Call of Duty nerd. He's a Battlefield nerd. Oh, yeah, he's Battlefield. Yeah, Battlefield nerd. Call of Duty in the recent years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, he's just, he's he's good. I, he's a, he's funny. He's Yeah. But I think everybody's going to have a little bit different experience. I also wonder how many people that got into the playtest got a very tailored version or something that's, you know, because it's going to be, they knew it was going to be, this is where all the word of mouth is going to Everybody's, everybody's all over it right now. Yep. A lot of Tarkov people were kind of meh about, about it. it. Yeah, because Tarkov people, Tarkov people mm, are okay. fucking World of Warcraft players. A lot of, no, 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 no. This is like players like, like clean. Oh. Who are very like open. They're like, I don't even enjoy Tarkov anymore. That's just where my following is. Like people that are very critical. Yeah. Clean got raided by Nikita during like one of the, after one of their like, um, like state of the union addresses. Mm-hmm. He's like, let's go to clean and clean's like, you shouldn't have gone to me. I'm not playing your fucking game to like 25,000 <laughs> people that just got pushed over. <laughs> Clean's very critical about everything that sure. they fucking do and say. And for him to like, you know, I wish I could have seen like his gameplay to see mm-hmm. why he was saying that, you know, because it, there is so many different ways to look at it depending on where you come from. You know, if you are a Tarkov player, maybe it does seem 
a little map because you were expecting a little more of XYZ, where if you're a Call of Duty or a Battlefield player, a lot of it, if you're not familiar with Tarkov, might seem so intriguing and new. You know, I also kind of wish I, I had more of a lens on like how they're seeing things. I also wonder how many of the people that are kind of like meh about certain things that are coming from Tarkov because how lackluster, not lackluster. That's not the right word I want to use, but how how few and far between PVP happens, because I think the that high that too. runs from a lot of people that play Tarkov is getting in those PVP fights is mm-hmm. walking out with a dog tag and a dope ass loot set that you were able to snag off of someone through a fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that those, those type of people that are looking for the game in the PVP aspect probably will not have as much fun with this until, until, late wipe or mid wipe or whatever when most of the Tarkov players are kind of done and they're kind of like I just don't want to deal with fucking people or they they constantly get into bot where like why are we lagging open up console and you can just see vacuums happening and stuff like that (laughs) I think those are the people that will then jump over to gray and have a little bit more fun because it's just with friends they're milling around you'll see a lot more fun videos happening you'll see RP videos of people playing like realistic squad stuff you know yeah and that that in its own respect, Tarkov is one of those games where I did not enjoy like drinking and being silly. Mm. You know? Yeah. It was like, because like live Tarkov, like you, you be on your shit. Yeah. So like, like if we did like drink and play Tarkov, it was like, we drank for a little bit and then like you start dying. You're like, okay, we're done. We're done. Yeah. But for the most part, it's like lock the fuck in. Like you're hypercritical about who you're running with just because you want to survive. It sucks because it's like this might give you that chance. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say, like, it might be nice to doing Drunk Tarkov at like either the beginning of the wipe or the end of wipe, right? When like things just don't. Yeah. End matter. of wipe when you don't give a yeah, shit. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, uh, or we're like, you know, resetting your account or whatever wouldn't hinder you that drastically. You know, I could tell, like, if I was in main game right now and my account that I currently have been playing on with single player would go away or just instantly wipe, I would be pissed. And I understand that that, yeah, take it, baby, like wipes are coming and shit like that. But at the same point in time, I'm like, I've progressed and put so much fucking time and effort and like grind and i'm not doing this as a job right i'm not even recording single player for the channel i'm just playing it on my own and if that much time and effort was invested right now got wiped i'd be pissed i'd be pissed so much so that i wouldn't do the missions again and i would just do nothing but pvp you know what i mean i can understand that mentality so having something like this is dope. There's also another game that just got released pretty recently. It's called Incursion Red River. And uh, the reason why this was super interesting, I was watching some guy talk about it because it just now my feed is just filled with Tarkov stuff because I've just been looking and trying to understand and research. One of the guys who plays Tarkov found this game and he's like, you know, one of the most interesting points about this game is that it's an offline extraction shooter that you can do co-op. So, and it's realistic and it's a lot of things. So I picked it up. It was like 13 bucks. It's on sale right now. It's early access, super early access, like early, early access. And um, it's, you know, very, it's, it's Tarkov light, light. Like it's, it's, you know, like cycle. No, like cycle. Cycle was well thought out. We called it Tarkov Light because it wasn't Tarkov, but Cycle was the cycle. You know what I mean? It had its own entity and things. This game is literally Tarkov Light. Like, if you were to see a Chinese... Is this the one that we played? No, it's. I just played it last night, so we haven't played it at all. What did we play? Remember that? We did play it. was that. like... Oh, I, like, um, almost um, identical to Tarkov. Not Space Tarkov. Breaking point or something? No, what was it called? Oh, yeah, it was like you had like your like character was like, like even like the POIs were almost identical. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, God, what was that game called? Oh man, we're like the the hideout and like you pick up your mission. It was almost like a yeah. phone game. Like you click. Yeah, through. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was free to play. Holy shoot! What is this called? 
Okay, well, you look this up. Anyway, so in Incursion Red River, it is it is just Tarkov Light. Everything, the, the UI is kind of Tarkov Light. I'll show you after the podcast what it looks like. Um, and it seems super interesting. There's only one map so far. There's different types of mission sets, so it kind of like keeps people like moving in a way that, you know, you're not... Um, the between different night cycles spawn points on the map and what missions you can pick can like determine on how you like deal with the map and where you go to in certain points. So it was really cool to see the variety of this game. And so I played it. What a hot piece of fucking garbage it is right now. Like it's lost light. Lost light. Yes. Yes. It? That's it. Okay. Yes. Man, that was a year ago. Yeah, that was a year ago. Yeah, that was because I didn't want to fucking play Tarkov. So we played that. <laughs> um, Which was Starko. Uh, but this incursion in Red River, man, it's got it needs to cook. Like it's early access. Like, and they even like one of the things when you open it up, it like blasts across the screen. It's like this is early, early access. Please be aware. We are in massive development for this game. It's like, okay, cool. Um, it could be a very interesting game. It's very like it has all the fun, like realistic feeling of the Tarkov with the idea of doing it like completely offline co-op. It's local, it's local setup. So it's like one person, it's like playing ready or not. You know what I mean? Just join your yeah. friend's lobby and then go fuck around in the games. It was 13 bucks. I was like, it can't be that bad. That's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. And I was playing it super late at night and like the, the lobby, not the lobby screen, but your hideout or whatever. Like there's like music that is like playing while you're like looking through stuff, but it's like, I don't understand what I was giving. It was giving me the fucking creeps. I had to turn the game off. It's got like, <laughs> there was like music going on, but it's like what you would imagine in like a, like a satanic ritual thing. It was like very like, oh, huh, huh. Oh, and like just like really weird ambiance and i'm like playing it like three o'clock in the morning i'm like oh, let's try and like as i'm listening i'm like in there i'm in there i'm listening i'm like <sighs> yeah like, i was like I, behind you. I just need to fucking turn this off right now i just don't feel comfortable but there's a okay there's one more free to play extraction shooter pv pv e v p v p v e p p uh, coming out called Arc Raiders. Have you heard of this game? We're going to have to look this up together. This looks fucking sick. It looks so cool. It looks like such good graphics. It's kind of got almost like a division vibe to it. Um, it's less realistic than the Tarkov in itself, but just the way that the game like the flow of it looks the way that everything looks it just seems really interesting and i'm just i'm actually holding out for this one i hope this doesn't turn into another cycle but this game might actually be worth time invested in are you looking it up right now yeah i just asked to be a part of their uh yeah i did too earlier yeah you can go on steam and you can you can request access to their whenever they do their play test and I feel like this game came out of like nowhere. But some of the the videos, you'll have to watch some of the videos on it. Some of the like the just the landscapes and the way the characters move and stuff. It just feels next gen. And it looks next gen and it seems like it'd be really interesting. So like like quadruple A next gen? Nothing, nothing will beat Black Sales. No, Black Flag was an Assassin's Creed. What was it? World of Warships. God, that's how it, good it was. That's no. how good it was. It's wiped itself from my memory. Skull and Bones. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> God. Uh. I, don't e I don't even know. I, it was just, I don't even know with games anymore, man. Do you, okay, we were talking about this... Um, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day because I was looking I for... Really just got spoiled. Spoiled is a great fucking point. Spoiled is a great point. Can I will think about like what this, the last like from like 2019 and on gave us as games. Pretty, I mean... 
Uh, Cyberpunk had its own problems, but Cyberpunk. Okay. Elden Ring. Great game. Elden Ring. Sure. What else? Fucking Baldur's Gate. Okay. All sorts of little stuff like sprinkled in between. Like it's a pretty, for how much we bitch, I feel like there's been pretty substantial games that have dropped that have like kind of carried us through. I don't think. Okay. So game waiting for a drought, you know? Yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm still stuck 20 years ago at this point, but like, or 15 years ago. But 2007 to 2009, 10. Hmm. Ooh, that was that was that's not sustainable. You can't expect that level. You should. You should. That was gaming peak, baby. That was people don't have that much creativity in them anymore. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly right. You're just rebooting shit. Like, well, so if you get something that's like somewhat original and decent, we should be we should be thankful. Yeah, and re- original and decent is also one of those things where like it's still piggybacked off of something else. You know yeah. what I mean? There's there's nothing original anymore, which is fine. I think at a certain point you kind of run out of ideas, right? Like there's we have a finite amount of like things that happen. I swear to God, if I find another game, it's like oh you're in a post apocalyptic world. Fuck that noise. Put me back. You're in 1970s. You know what I mean? I'd be like. That's something I haven't seen. Like, there's a game, yeah. um, Ground Zero. Or is it not Ground Zero? Fuck. What's it called? Generation Zero. Um, Generation Zero is set in the, the 80s. You know what I mean? And, like, that, the whole vibe of it is like robots have taken over, like, this Midwest Wisconsin town or some shit like that. And, like, you're just, you know, come back from like a camping trip and the whole world is just falling apart and robots are running everywhere. Um, and you just loot and build better kits and just do these missions. It's a ton of fun. It's co-op. I think you even bought it. I think I convinced you to buy this game. I just looked it up. I do have it. It's in my library. Yep. Generation zero. It's a lot of fun and they've done a ton of work to that game, but because it's set in like the eighties or whatever, the vibe of it is like, you know, find an eight track and like, listen to it, you know, stuff like that. It's like, (laughs) Oh, it's, you know, it's cool. It's cool to have those types of things. I think those settings are way cooler. I'm so sick of, I'm so sick of, uh, 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 having to jump into the future or having a always, 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 always. I don't know what it is or why people are doing it. It's like, it just does not seem fun because like when we were kids, the future is what is now, you know what I mean? So like, how can you imagine? Future ain't that tight. Nah, nah, go back. Go back. Future I like high on life. Yes. That's the future I want. You mean you mean to tell me in 40 years everybody's gonna be butt fucking each other? Great. (laughs) Let's talk about it. I think are we not now? That's true. Yeah. Pioneers just out there eating ass in the fucking 80s, not knowing the trail they're blazing. Yeah. Yeah, they they set the groundwork for things that cannot be undone. I think it was Woodstock. 69 yeah I think there's like one guy at Woodstock he's like I just so dehydrated just buried his face in some ass for some shade from the fucking heat because he's too fucking deep on like an acid trip and then somebody's like I'm gonna try that and it, it, that's just the the start of the snowball just the look like a bunch of fucking down ostriches the <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean I have to imagine it was farther back than that you watch some of those old timey porns like, you know, old s- time, like, like silent, silent film, film porn. Yeah. Like a little, little slide screen comes yeah. up. Ooh, yes. I like that. Yeah. Have you Ooh. never, have you never seen them? No. When I was in Barcelona and I went to the, the sex museum, they had no fucking way. I swear to God, they had a room where it was I like, like you'd be executed back in the, whoa, in like a silent film no, era. Dude, for it, was, it was a wild board. thing, but they had, a, they had a silent film thing. It was like, you know, there was like a whole like pamphlet. You sat down like in what was like a theater room in this like sex museum and you could watch this thing. And it was like, they'd hand you a pamphlet at the front and there was like, you know, people lined around the side to be like, you know, no jerking it in there. Um, Can't tell me what to do, but it was like a whole historic thing about how, unfortunately they gave it to me. It's all in fucking Spanish. So I'm, I don't know <laughs> what this says, but it was this whole thing about how the porn industry had really like started. It was a, it was a whole thing. Like brothels were a, a, like part of it, whatever. When film started becoming like really big or whatever, that was something that they had jumped into because they could find a market for it. And, and so you watch these like really weird, like, and remember back in the day when we did video, like when it came to stop motion, the way that 
the cameras recorded things were all based on a wheel crank. So that's why everything looked so sped up back in the day. So you mm, watch porn. Keeping that timing. Some yeah. guy's excited. He's like, fucking let's yeah. go. <laughs> you know? So it was really it was really an interesting thing, but it's also extremely weird to watch. You like kind of watch yeah. it like this is awkward. And like again, this is where creative ideas kind of get to the next point of like, where's the next cool idea? And this is why we have things like shit in my mouth you know type of porn now because it's like you watch that stuff and it was the most vanilla uh, calm bean down, Corf. <laughs> it was the most vanilla bean porn i've ever seen in my life <laughs> like this is historic like right, okay whatever you want man <laughs> yeah, exactly just it's real awkward missionary <laughs> yeah that's uh, yeah yeah like it was just like it, you watched it and you were like both of these people do not seem like they want to be here for this <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> oh man <laughs> well okay okay so they have like stage fright, right? Sure. Can you imagine? Like, you don't even know what a fucking camera is. What is this? What does it do? You, you know, you just fuck. I, what? <laughs> <laughs> do it, I look at it? Do I don't look at it? <laughs> well, look at her. <laughs> <laughs> do you ask your father before you do this? Don't look at her. <laughs> um, man, what a weird, weird scenario to like. When wondering like how you get that job, you know what I mean? We got a we got a wild idea. Steve, take your pants off. You some Becky. degenerate in a bar. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, like the bar is closed. They're the last two people that didn't make like the two a.m. fucking like where am I going? <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, want to make uh, like the, the bartender's roommate with a fucking curly mustache? Want to make a silver dollar? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like uh what is it Bioshock Infinite when you flip the coin? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. Have you seen Fallout? I have not finished it. I've been Piece su- of shit, dude. I've been super busy. That, that is on my goal for this weekend. So before before the first week of its showing has been released, they've already renewed it for another season. Which is great because as of so far, four or five episodes in. Because I, it's only an eight, eight episode season. Okay. Yeah. As much as I rag on Amazon, I'm really thankful that they decided to dump this entire season instead of doing the Invincible thing where it was like an oh episode of week. I didn't even Dude. realize Invincible was done. All right. I didn't. I didn't either. I didn't even realize that Shogun was releasing more episodes when I said they're only doing. I thought they ended on the last episode I saw. I was like, that's how you fucking end it? That's why I was so mind blown when like I found out that there wasn't going to be anymore because I was like, how the fuck do you end all that now? There, there's still more to come. Okay. Because Yeah, but if you're a fucking if you're a streaming service, I don't pay you to do weekly releases. No. no. Dump no, it. No, no. Let me binge it and then let me want it for fucking there's a the re- next year yeah, while you th- reshoot the next one. Well, I haven't. I don't know. I'm in. I don't care for TV. I don't know if um, the reason why I kept up with Invincible so much, and I waited for that Thursday, is because I knew it was a new episode, and maybe that's why I haven't really sat down to grind out Fallout because I know it'll just be there, and I'm not f- missing anything. But it's a catch twenty two, I think, on my end. But respect that it is completely out because it has been so nice for me to be able to just sit down in a free moment that I have and like get an episode in and then walk away and know that I can start it either later that night or the next day and not have to wait an entire week. Eight episodes seems light though. Is that like a season nowadays? Yeah. For like, for like big production stuff. Yeah. I'd say like more like sitcoms and stuff like that. Yeah. Or less. Way, yeah. It's like once, you know, but um, like big productions, things like these, like, because these like TV series are kind of like the new movies, you know, like movies aren't hitting like they used to, but like all the streaming services are pumping money into this stuff because they want these intellectual properties that they can keep in perpetuity and like, yeah. just keep playing and keep making revenue off of. And really because, well, I think less people are going to the movies than they used to with streaming services. And because of that, these like these names are now being known for their roles in yeah, these series yeah, that people get so yeah, attached to, you for know? For sure, for sure. That's a that's a big one too. Is like, well, and movies are just they're not expensive. There's like movies are really not expensive. They're just more of an event. 
Like you plan to go to the movies. You can just turn on the TV at any point in time. You know what I mean? There's not much hindering you from like, there's a lot of like, I still haven't seen Dune 2. Which I think I'm okay with right now. I'll I'll wait till it's out and I'll watch it. I just Dune one was really good. I'm excited to see Dune two, but I just I Dune cannot... two is amazing. Was it? Yeah, I would go see it in theaters. I would go see it in theaters again. Really? Yes. Hmm. And I and it's one of those ones that I think it does benefit from being in the movie theater experience. Okay. Um, just. God, just the fucking the weirdness of they have a scene where Austin Butler's character, like before he goes to like the Dune planet, he's like he's kind of without spoiling anything. He before he's chosen to go there to like take on the fight Mm -hmm. is kind of like tested in this like battle against all these different people. And the premise behind it all, they shot it all with infrared cameras and then put a negative filter on it because it's a planet that's underneath a black sun. So it doesn't have sunlight in a typical way and stuff like that. And just how weird everything looked and like the thought process they put. Yeah. I heard the cinematography is fucking phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's so good. Which is, which is good because it's long, if you get long, but it's good. It's like a three hour movie, three and a half hour movie or something like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, and those two together sum up book one. Yeah, exactly. So book, have you ever read the book? Yeah. Yeah. It is a. Yeah. I've, I've read exactly book one. It, I have all the other ones just looking at me. It is a read, man. I read. It's a tough read. It, the first time I read Dune, I got done. I remember I finished it, closed it, went, <laughs> didn't fucking understand anything. Turned, opened it up, started back over, immediately read it again. It was the only way I could have done it. I also have a problem. I don't know if it's just because I'm mentally challenged, but um, when there's fictional names that the author thinks is they built this world and mm. and like there's a character named Carnathanathelius and there's too the much of that in the first fucking three pages of Dune yeah there's so much where you're like I tried rereading it after watching the movie and I'm still like oh fuck like yeah. I've 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 come to the point that the way I can get through books nowadays is when there are names like that I just make them up in my head it's like if Dr. Seuss did like fucking PCP and mescaline instead of just like a happy dose of shrooms with weed. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like it's so like aggressively like almost German. Yeah. In, like it's pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah. But like it's also like so like silly and made up that like you sit there and you read it and you're like, what the f-? like I it's think like you need subtitles for the book. I'm trying somehow. to remember. Who... I know it doesn't make sense. I know I'm chlorophyll it with like you can't read an <laughs> audiobook, but <laughs> well. That that's what I was gonna say because I remember a couple of years ago I was like I'm gonna read oh before the first movie came out I was like I'm gonna read Dune again I just didn't have time I was working a lot so I got the audiobook and I think I think Will Wheaton read it maybe I don't remember maybe not I can't remember but I remember listening to the audiobook and then explaining and talking about stuff and I was like is that how you fucking say that word like yeah that's the other thing consistently throughout the book I was like what is he talking about I was like. Oh, that's what he's talking about. There's like multiple times while listening to the audiobook, I had to open up the actual book and like read when he was reading and be like, <laughs> oh. Cause it was just, oh. it was like hearing the story for the first time with the actual words and then seeing the movie. And I was like, I know what he's talking about now, you know? <laughs> it's like, for what it's worth, that's what my entire medical education is. Mm. I learned from a guy that I didn't realize had a very thick Ohio accent. Oh, and now I don't even I don't even go to pronounce where he said it. He called it an Oli Cranon. It's an Olecranon. <laughs> like, like shit like that. I now I wait for doctors to say stuff. But I go, mm, uh, yeah. And then I just immediately throw out everything I've learned. And that's the word I'm saying from now on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we've been doing that for years. Say things like Aspergrass. You know what I mean? And it's like, is it melee or melee? Melee. Or melee. It's melee. You know? Yeah. What are the, what are the other ones? There's always shit like that that I go back and forth on. You hear somebody say it, you're like, motherfucker, dude. Like, I just made up my mind like two days ago that I was going to pronounce it like this, and now you're fucking switching it up on me. I mean, that, that's always the whole idea of potato, potato, right? Tomato, tomato. Who the fuck says potato? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Name I one. I don't know, but I definitely call Connor it. Fucking I, McGregor doesn't call it that. Yeah. <laughs> 
I I think tomato is way more common in like the British language than it is tomato here in the United States. I'll say know? tomato. I'll say tomato if I want to be a prick. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Can you? But take who the- says potato? I do. Only because no one says potato. <laughs> 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 I mean, that, it's fun to say it like that, though. But that's that's the slippery slope, too. Once you start saying words like that that are fun, you kind of forget. Like, I called I called flour one day wheat dust. I had been calling it wheat dust for a long time. I forgot that it was called flour at some point. I was doing something. I was like, oh, I need the wheat dust. And someone was like, what? And I was like, ooh, don't remember what that's called. It's... That's fun. Play, play with words is fun. No. My buddy Jeff used to tell me all the time, he's like, can you read, Trevor? <laughs> I would just say words just fucking hella random. I was like, yeah, I can. I think. <laughs> you, take the wheat, you take the wheat dust, you mix it with the with the cow semen, and you, you know, you, you make the bread. <laughs> Fuck, you sound like you sound like a made up Adam Sandler character trying to be dumb. <laughs> Whoa! Yo, the wheat dust! That's low, dude. Actually, I just watched... Penguins don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched uh, Adam Sandler's um, latest movie he put out, where he's like in space. Um, what is it called? Hold on, With me... a spider? Yeah. Fuck. I tried. I couldn't get through that. That's fucking freaking me out. I don't know what happened to Adam Sandler. Space Man. That he decided that he was too good to make us laugh anymore. But when he does stuff like that or uncut gems, I just get like a weird anxiety. Yeah. You have nothing to prove. We think you're great. You don't need to do this shit. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know, man. I watched Space Man and I was hooked the entire movie. And like, I, it was weirdly like it was slow. I was just like, come on, what is happening? It Nothing weird me out. I couldn't keep up with it. When, when turn like, it off. Like when, I don't know if you didn't get to the, you didn't watch the end of it or whatever. Nope. <laughs> I made about halfway. I think it's even that's generous, man. Like just, I was sitting there like, you know, it's bad when I'm like, I think I'm going to go do the dishes. <laughs> like, I, kept, I can't even like sit and watch. It's like I kept oh, waiting fuck. for something like like an answer to happen. Nothing ever happened. It has nothing to do with him in doing this fucking mission. It's just literally about a guy coming to grips with the fact that he's just been a piece of shit. And this whole mission and everything has been the focus of his life. And now he's like coming to grips on the fact that he's like, I just don't want to be here anymore. I want to be home. You know what I mean? And like, so it's, and I, I think it's very much that uncut gems. And what was the other one he did that was really heavy duty? Um, punch drunk love, punch drunk love, you know, things like that. I think that that's where Sandler's starting to shine a lot because like, it's the same. Sandler only has one character. If he's doing comedy, it's one fucking character. But if he's doing the dramas, it's only one character. It's the same fucking guy where it's just like, you just feel sorry for yeah it's heavy and you feel sorry for him he did it all to himself and then when you get to the point where i I don't know maybe it just resonates with me as a guy i mean maybe not you because you tuck but um you know when you you struggle a lot and you're trying to make your ends and you're you're grinding hella hard and you kind of put people on the back burner for your own self-worth and then when you fucking click and you go whoops I shouldn't have done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just like hits on another different level. I kind of want to sit outside in the rain. I don't get that because I sleep lives, you know? So I understand. Name one live you saved. Uh, (laughs) Touche. If anything, I told the guy like, you don't have a lot of time left. (laughs) (laughs) That might have saved his life. Imagine all the pain and suffering. He just went home and cobained himself. (laughs) That's saving a life. Yeah. Saving, saving, oh, saving the hassle of life. How about that? Paperwork at the end of the day. Oh, that wasn't his scan. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, he just had a bad foot. (laughs) Weast. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we played. So this video coming out today is Monday. Welcome to your Monday week. If you haven't Monday. haven't seen it, go back and watch Friday's video. Hoophobia. 
what what an event those that was that was probably the most that was a lot of fun that was the most fun i had had just dicking around for an hour you know what i mean yeah. that was it was, that was a lot of fun it wasn't it, it'd be so much better with more people oh for sure for sure if there oh was, man if there was only one hunter Although, in like 10 i was gonna say years, i don't know how you could do it with fucking one hunter though I God damn! Like, well, I, I hope you can increase the hunters. That was hard. There was I was talking shit. I was like, "You can't hit me!" And then I was a hunter. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, yeah. It was a. It was, there's. There, I have the clip in there where I'm just like running off the hill, and I'm like, "Man!" <laughs> it just. I wish you could have seen it from fucking my perspective. Just um, from the top rope. <laughs> just coming. <laughs> It was and it was good. It was good, clean fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. There wasn't. There wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't Nobody a lot to suck each other off. No. Nope. You know, it was simple. It was simple. Point. It was. It was very straightforward. Not a whole lot of buttons. This is what you're doing. This is your goal. And it was just a fun little party game to play. And I, I enjoyed spending the time doing that. And it was just. It was a lot of fun. It's gonna be. A, I can actually. This is a cool part. So this Friday video is a Freaky Friday. I made a Freaky Friday for Friday because we moved the podcast. Hey. Yeah. So it's coming out tomorrow, two days ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be out. All right. So it, uh, I I cut a lot of I our- I can't wait to see you all talking shit about me not being able to shoot. <laughs> what am I- What am I- Fuck <laughs> yeah, it. It's so bad. I kept the one in and it was like running and I'm like- Oh, the deers are finally going to win one. <laughs> and you're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking impossible. Yeah. Well, that map was hard, too. There's a lot that, of terrain. Yeah. The, the, the fucking the dip down of there. I was like, if I take them down by the water and then like you guys could duck and then like you're fucking just like the tips of your antlers are sticking out. Like, I can't fucking see them here. So I'm trying to get in the way. You guys are jumping off fucking high ground at me and shit. I try to get out there and then it's just even worse because it's like <laughs> uneven rocks. terrain rocks everywhere. <laughs> fucking shit there was so much of that where like i'd lose aaron like in the bush and i'd be like I, I was like looking for him and like going back and like scrubbing the video and i can just see him laying down like <laughs> right next to me and i'm like oh like so much of that like because the bushes were hard to see through so like yeah. if you're not paying attention like you wouldn't have seen just like a deer crouch down and like you would see the antlers and everything but you had to be paying attention it was like it was really fun because it was like it was like Tag and hide and seek all combined into one. Yeah. You know, stupid, fun little game. That was, that was a lot of fun. I wish, yeah. I wish we had something like that. That was just like a, a knock around stupid party game. Like one that we just had a bunch of people that we could just pick like a, a day. We're not doing, we didn't go down to, to San Jose this weekend. We're going to push that to another thing. So it's like, yeah, well, if people are around, maybe we should, cause we were all planning on going down anyway. Well, maybe we should plan something for, Yesterday, the day before. Yeah. Yesterday, day before. Day before. Saturday. Are you to not tomorrow? Day after. Are you S Saturday? I'm on call. You're still on call though, right? That's yeah. when was the last time you got called in on call? The last time I was on call. <laughs> Just yeah. lick whatever Cliff store handles are. He's got streptococcus. Is that what he's got right now? It's streptococcal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cuckle. You can get streptococcal in your penis. You can. You can get it in your vagina too. Yeah. Apparently, it's incredibly rare. Yeah, there's not a lot of people. It's like I got strep throat. Can I suck your dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot of people that have strep throat and then don't get it treated. I think that's the next one. There's there's a fair amount. <laughs> I did. So when I had COVID last time, I had strep throat. I didn't realize it was strep throat until like three or four days into it because i thought it was just part of covid You're just getting like blistery throat well, no i never got like the monster yeah. i never got monches or anything but like i was just like i was dying i was dying i couldn't swallow i was fucking dying it was the worst pain i ever had in my life remember i told you i was like man i would have taken the body aches over that when i ended up talking to the doctor he's like oh what he was like, i can't swallow i'm like i barely able to get food and water down he's like oh that sounds like strep throat we've noticed from time to time people that get covid will end up with strep throat and i'm like well what do i do he's like well we can get you antibiotics but you're also got you're a little late in it yeah he's like you're a little late and you got the covid virus going on he's like so it's not really gonna do much 
I'm like, so what do I do? He's like, what are you doing now? <laughs> I was like, get good. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was like, I'm, I look like fucking little Wayne. I got a, I got a cup with gems on it. I'm pouring day quill. I've got like the spray, uh, the throat spray. I'm just dumping into it. I'm mixing that up. I've got lozenges inside of that to like melt Hell down. Yeah. I've got, I've, and I mean, I'm a bit of Sprite. Yeah. Like, I've just like two fucking like nose things in my face and I'm just slamming those. And he's like, yeah, just keep that up. <laughs> what type of doctor are you, man? <laughs> That's what I've been saying every time you tell me a story about your doctor. I swear to you. I, maybe it's just like, Eyes are baby. <laughs> or it's just one of those things. He's just like an old Korean dude. So, like, he's just back at where he's like, have you tried killing a chicken? You know what I mean? Like, the, the one of those type of people. But yeah. he will tell me some wild thing. And I'm just like, I remember having a conversation. I was like, you know, the shit will kill my kidneys or like in my liver. Like, I know that that'll be it. Is there any, <laughs> you want to die this way? You want to die this yeah, way? Yeah. He's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like, there's not really much you can do except for get through it. So just get through it. He's like, don't do it then. I was like, well, I'm miserable. He's like, then do it. I'm just, <laughs> can you just give me some drugs while I do it? Yeah. That's why. Like, yeah. Anything, anything. He's like, I'll put a prescription in for cough meds. Thanks doc. <laughs> all right let's wrap this sucker up let's go back to playing tarkov back to the uh, damn grind happy monday motherfuckers enjoy your week we're out of here bye bye <laughs> <laughs>